It's now time for member statements. The member for Thunder Bay, Atacokan. Thank you, Speaker. Speaker, another day, another cut, this time libraries. The Ontario Library Science North is losing half of its budget. The OLS North staff of 11 did a big job for libraries across the North. Five staff are losing their job and one is being reduced to part-time. So much for Premier Ford's No Job Cuts pledge. My heart goes out to each of these workers and their families. Cutting the OLS North budget is going to hurt a lot of people, hurt communities, especially rural Northern Ontario communities. Sometimes people stop at their local library to check out a book, but often they come for other reasons. On a cold winter afternoon, folks who live off the grid come to stay warm and save on firewood and use computers. Seniors with limited mobility come to gather with others. Students come after school. The Ontario Library Service North helped Northern families serve their communities, like the Atacokan Public Library and the Oliver Papoonj Public Library in my riding. Library budgets depend on the cost-effective services that the OLS North provided, like a computerized catalog service, e-book subscription services, and staff development. I hope that the government is listening. We deserve better. The North deserves better. Rural communities deserve better. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Simcoe North. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Last weekend, I had the great honour to attend the Georgian Bay Hunters and Anglers Annual Conservation Wild Game Dinner. On the menu this year, we were served bear sausages, smoked wild turkey, and I, dish I think you would enjoy, Mr. Speaker, a moose and bear tortier. I would like to use this opportunity to thank Georgian Bay Hunters and Anglers for the wonderful feast full of many delicious wildlife surprises. Most importantly, I want to thank them for nearly century-long dedication to our community and local heritage. Funds from the Wild Game Dinner and many other GBHA fundraisers go directly into programs, facilities and events that support the youth, conservation and communities of Simcoe North. In regards to conservation, the GBHA has spearheaded massive inroads in the region. Their conservation efforts over the past decades have included wild turkey reintroduction, stream restoration, and restocking projects with the Eastern Georgian Bay Stewardship Council. Since 2003, their award-winning junior club has engaged local youth in outdoor activities with the goal of helping young people find their place in the outdoors. All year long, the junior club runs programs such as tree planting projects, firearm safety, and wood duck nesting. Thanks to the amazing leadership of our Minister of Natural Resources and Forestry, Georgian Bay Hunters and Anglers and similar organizations across Ontario can be rest assured that they have a partner at Queen's Park. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Toronto Centre. Thank you, Speaker. Last week, constituents in the heart of my community in the Church in Wellesley Village were exposed to homophobia and transphobia as men trying to preach hate entered the community and took up space screaming hateful things at members of my community. Many brave constituents stood their ground and tried to challenge the preachers in a way that made it clear that their space, that their speech and their hate was not welcome in our neighborhood. I want to be crystal clear. Hate, bigotry, homophobia, and transphobia have no place in our society and absolutely no place in the gay village in my riding. Thank you. This government has done absolutely nothing to help protect queer and trans folks in Ontario. Instead, their party has adopted a stance that trans people are not valid. Instead, the Premier still refuses to denounce his affiliations with known right-wing racist and homophobic celebrity. We can do better. Ontario deserves better. I am so proud of my constituents, the folks who stood up and said no to hate. I am with you. My caucus is with you. And in the words of Rita Mae Brown, an army of lovers shall not fail. Thank you. Member statements. The member from Milton. 
Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every year, Miltonians get together on one Saturday morning to pick up trash and keep our town beautiful. This past Saturday was that day, and I was proud to see over 1,000 Miltonians participate in this year's Good Neighbors Day. This year marked the 27th year of the Community Day, Mr. Speaker. I was out with my team doing our part, and you wouldn't believe some of the items people found. One of the town councillors even found a $10 bill, Mr. Speaker, while wow. picking up garbage in the ditch. <laughs> See, Mr. Speaker, it really does pay to clean up. I want to thank all of the organizers, volunteers who made this happen and kept everyone safe while picking up trash along the roadways by providing Yellow West. Special thanks to the town of Milton and Diego Carolina from Tim Hortons for their generous contributions. This day wouldn't be possible without the support from many other sponsors, including the TD Friends of the Environment Foundation, as well as the Rotary Club of Milton, the RCMP, and Halton Regional Police. As the town councillors learned this year, Mr. Speaker, picking up trash can find you some cash. Thank you. Oh. Member statements, the member for Essex. Thank you very much, Speaker. On behalf of myself and my colleagues from Windsor Tecumseh and Windsor West, Percy Hatfield, Lisa Gretzky, it's an honour to rise today during Nursing Week to recognize this year's winner of the Lois Fairley Award chosen by registered nurses in my area. This year's recipient is Barb Dieter. Barb is currently the president of the Nurses Union at Windsor Essex County Public Health Unit. Unfortunately, Speaker, 80 nurses there have been on strike for more than two months, demanding fairness and equality for their profession. Barb began her career 46 years ago at Hotel Du Hospital. She worked in all departments there before moving over to the Victorian Order of Nurses. Barb spent 12 years with the VON. She went back to university, got her Bachelor of Science in Nursing, and joined the health unit. Barb runs the Healthy Babies, Healthy Children program, as well as the Healthy Families Department. She's been, she's been the president of her union for nearly 20 years. Barb is described by her peers as a leader, a mentor, and as a pillar of strength who demonstrates patience, compassion, and professionalism. Speaker of the Lowest Fairly Award honors someone who has demonstrated a commitment to serving the community through excellent in, excellence in patient care. The RNAO has partnered with the Fairley family on this award for the past 12 years. Lois Fairley was a highly regarded nurse who led by example. She gave back to her community, her profession, and especially to her patients. Speaker, as I mentioned, Barb has been on strike for more than two months, fighting for respect and improved public health policy. This at a time when public health in Ontario is on the chopping block by conservative cutbacks and consolidation. I want to congratulate Barb Dieter. You've set an example for nursing profession in Ontario, and we all are better for it. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Don Valley West. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yesterday my partner Jane and I had uh, the opportunity once again to share in one of the best outdoor experiences that Toronto has to offer. We paddled the Don River. For 26 years, Paddle the Dawn has offered people who love Toronto and who love the natural world a chance to blend the two in a completely unique way. It's the only time of year you can view the Millwood Bridge or the Bloor Viaduct from the vantage point of a canoe. The towers of Thorncliff Park in my riding at Dawn Valley West take on a whole new grandeur from the river, and the quiet of nesting mallards is a beautiful antidote to the roar of the Dawn Valley Parkway. This year, the weather was perfect, and the shores of the river were teeming with activity. Toronto marathoners, Riverdale cyclists, Cabbage Town hikers for hospice, bird watchers, cyclists, and parents with kids in strollers shared the route along the Don. But apart from being just a fantastic 10-kilometer trip from Ernest Thompson Seton Park right down to Lake Ontario, Paddle the Dawn is a great reminder that it is possible to repair damage that has been done by humans. Just a few decades ago, the Dawn River was declared dead by environmental groups. Now it is thriving again. It's a resurrection story of thousands of volunteers, determined, patient environmentalists, the Toronto Region Conservation Authority with the support of all three levels of government, the private sector, particularly Manulife who've worked for years to bring back the Dawn. Jane and I started paddling the Dawn in 2004, and even in that time, we've seen a huge difference. Less garbage, more wildlife, cleaner river. Colleagues from the legislature, Rima Burns McGowan and Chris Glover, were fellow travellers <laughs> along with federal and municipal politicians. We all have a responsibility to continue this work. So thank you to the volunteers, thank you to the visionary folks at TRCA and all the private and professional environmentalists who have worked so hard for decades to resurrect this precious water. Miigwech, Marcy. 
Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Cambridge. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Speaker. It's with a heavy heart that I rise today to pay tribute to Leonard Patrick Kelly, or most lovingly known as Red. Red, who is also a longtime family friend of the Carhalios family, passed away on May 2nd at the age of 91. He was a former MP, an avid hockey player, and a dedicated coach. He played for the Detroit Red Wings and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Red wore many jerseys throughout his life and career, but while serving as an MP and playing for Toronto, he went on to help the Leafs win not one, but two Stanley Cups. In 2017, he was named one of the 100 greatest NHL players in history. Truly a hockey legend, winning a total of eight Stanley Cups. I remember Red visiting my father-in-law's restaurant, Black Cat Fish and Chips on Avenue Road, for many years, especially every Good Friday. My husband Jim and I had the honour of Red being a guest at our wedding. My sincere condolences go out to Red's wife, Andra, their four children, Casey, Patrick, Con, and Kitty, and their eight grandchildren during this difficult time. Eternal rest grant unto him, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon him. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Hamilton West, Ancaster, Dundas. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in the House to speak about the, 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 this government's budget cuts and the very real impacts that they have in my community of Hamilton West, Ancaster Dundas in particular. Uh, the city of Hamilton, as is many municipalities, is in the dark, and they're fearful of the impact uh, that millions of dollars, in fact, almost $10 million of dollars, being pulled out of Hamilton child care program, public health, including addictions counseling services. The only sure thing uh, in this is that they have announced the complete axing of the addictions service initiative, which was a pilot program providing much-needed assistance to Ontario Works recipients looking to rejoin the workplace. Uh, the Solicitor General stood in this House last week and stated, and I quote, when people choose to use and abuse drugs, it has an impact. Mr. Speaker, I'm asking, is this government really serious about improving the lives of those most vulnerable by funding addiction counselling, or are they content to demonize individuals by using words like choose to use and abuse? Because the results of this budget have real impact on individuals for help in battling their addictions. It has impact in our schools, with children having to start their learning day without school breakfast programs. It has an impact on seniors who rely on public health units to provide dental coverage. So, Speaker, I ask, how can the Solicitor General stand by while her government cuts the very programs that help those that are most in need? And how can this government continue to show such a tone-deaf attitude when it comes to the realities that people are facing every day in this province of Ontario? Member statements. Member for Oakville. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honor, as always, to speak here. Over the weekend, I had the pleasure of attending the Mandarin Multiple Sclerosis Walk in Oakville. The walk is an annual event that takes place to raise money for MS research, and in 2018, the countrywide event raised over $8 million with help from 31,000 donors, participants, and volunteers. It was great to see so many people from the community involved and working to raise money to help fund research in hopes of finding a cure. For those unfamiliar with multiple sclerosis, MS is an autoimmune disease of the central nervous system that affects one in 385 Canadians, making it one of the highest instances in the world. The disease attacks myelin, the protective covering of the nerves, nerves causing inflammation and often damaging myelin. Myelin is necessary for the transmission of nerve impulses through not nerve fibers. If damage to myelin is slight, nerve impulses travel with minor interruptions. However, if damage is substantial and if scar tissue replaces the myelin, nerve impulses may be completely disrupted and the nerve fibers themselves can be damaged. MS is unpredictable and can cause symptoms such as extreme fatigue, lack of coordination, weakness, tingling, impaired sensation, vision problems, bladder problems, cognitive impairment, and mood changes. Its effects can be physical, emotional, and financial. Currently, there is no cure, but each day our researchers are learning more about what causes MS and zeroing in on the cure. Again, I would like to give my heartfelt thanks to everyone involved in the Oakville event this weekend. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. And now the member for Haldeman Norfolk. Thank you, Speaker. Our thoughts and prayers go out to a man, a, a legend who taught me how to skate, 
Hockey Hall of Famer Leonard Red Kelly passed away May 2nd. Uh, it was just a year or so ago that uh, Red visited Queen's Park. Red Kelly was born and raised Woodhouse Township farm boy, destined to be one of the greatest hockey players in history. Over his stellar 20 seasons, Red was able to enjoy holding the Stanley Cup on eight different occasions, as I understand it, four with uh, Detroit and four with Toronto. Red was a devoted, motivated, accomplished man with his heart and soul in hockey. He was a man who could do it all. While serving as a member of parliament for York West, Red simultaneously played center for the Leafs and led them to the Stanley Cup in 1964. Red Kelly's home farm is at the intersection of Red Kelly Line and the Blue Line in Haldeman, Norfolk. Red grew up playing on the farm ponds of Norfolk County. He has touched the lives of so many, including local boys who have gone on to play professional hockey. Like I say, in my case, a young lad who really didn't play hockey, but was taught by Red how to skate on the Bacchus Mill Pond, taught by Red Kelly, a true gentleman. Thank you very much. Reports by committees.